Hello everyone, welcome back to your own channel Indian History. The topic which we are going to discuss today is Indian National Congress, its foundation and the moderate phase. So learners, what are we going to know about once we watch today's video? We are going to know about commencement and growth of modern nationalism, political associations before the Indian National Congress and their demands, foundation of the Indian National Congress, theories behind the formation of Indian National Congress, aims and objectives of the Congress, prominent leaders of the INC, moderates and their approach and contributions of the moderates in the history of Indian freedom. So, how did modern nationalism commence? How did it started? Well, friends, the Indian nationalism, the Indian nationalism was result of two factors. The first one was colonial policies and the another one was reaction to colonial policies. These two factors were responsible for the origination of Indian nationalism. Now growth of modern nationalism. Well, every growth is a slow and steady process. It takes years. So the growth of modern nationalism was because of these factors. Well, we started basically understanding of contradictions which arose uh, out of Indian and colonial interest. That is the Indian interest and the interest of the colonial powers had contradictions. N then the unification of the country, political, administrative and economic grounds. So the country got united because of several factors. One of the factors was uh, now the country was being ruled by a single power that is the colonial power as we saw in the ancient times under the rule of great Mauryas. Okay, then the third factor uh, which was responsible for the growth of modern nationalism was Western thought and education because we were being ruled by uh, the, in, the colonial power and they introduced Western thought, then Western education. Thus, these uh, thinkers, the Western thinkers, their thought, their school of thought and the education imparted in India had positive effects on the minds of the Indians. The next was the role of press and literature. What they did? They helped in uh, uniting the people of the country, in creating awareness among the people of the country. Next was rediscoveries of India's past, that is historical researches. What happened? The discoveries led by historians okay though uh, many were british but it originated a sense of pride among the countrymen about their rich culture and rich heritage the next was the progressive character of the social religious reform movement the reform movements which were which had taken few years back and were taking place these uh, social religious reform movements also helped in creating a sense of unity a sense of respect for all the members of the all the members of the country and all the citizens of the country and the groups like women and the people from lower caste. Next was the rise of middle class intelligentsia. So friends, as we have seen, so friends, we all are aware that middle class has some unique power and when middle class comes into action, it has created visible effects 
visible changes in the history of a country as we are aware of renaissance in europe so what happened the middle class came into action so in india also the middle class came in action and this was also responsible for the growth of modern nationalism then impact of contemporary movements worldwide the movements which are taking a place in our neighbor world or neighbor places it had a very positive effects on the indian minds like rise of number of nations on the rins of spanish and portuguese empires in south america and the national liberation movements of greece and italy in general and of ireland in particular deeply influenced the nationalist ranks title is political associations before the indian national congress so friends inc was not the first uh, association which was made in the country against the colonial rule it was not the not the first organization then most of the political associations in the early half so you have to remember early half of the 19th century they were dominated by wealthy and aristocratic elements later on we will see that political association in the second half of the 19th century will be dominated by the middle class people so this is the difference most of the uh, political associations in the early half of the 19th century they were dominated by wealthy and aristocratic elements then a uh, character the character of the associations before the indian national congress they were local and regional next was demands of the political association now what were the demands of the political association that were formed before the formation of indian national congress through long petitions to the british parliament these political associations demanded what were their demands the demands were administrative reforms then association of the indians with the administration and a spread of education so these were the three basic demands which these associations laid before the government then as i said you earlier the political associations of the second half of the 19th century these were dominated by educated middle class and middle class which has immense power it came into action and the associations were dominated by lawyers journalists doctors and teachers and they had much wider perspective and agenda so some political associations example of some political associations in bengal bombay and madras are on your screen as you can see the zamindari association the bengal british indian society the east india association the indian league the indian association of calcutta these were some political associations in bengal then in bombay the punna sarvajanik sabha the bombay presidency association and in madras the madras mahajan sabha these were some of the associations that were made made before the formation of indian national congress then a pre congress campaigns so what were the points of the associations that were formed before inc what they wanted the association organized various campaigns before the inc appeared on the scene the campaigns were for imposition of import duty on cotton in 1875 for indianization of government service between 1878 to 79 against license of gun adventure against arms act in 1878 against vernacular press act in 1878 for right to join volunteer corps against plantation labor and against inland immigration act in support of elbert bill against reduction in maximum age for appearing in indian civil services the age the maximum age limit for the indian civil services examination was reduced 
to 19 years from 20 years in the year 1876 also a uh, grand grand delhi Dal- darbar was organized when the country was facing severe famine and it was organized in the year 1877 so these were few things which worked against the government and the association laid their points in front of the government about the fact that they were not in support of the introduction of these things and uh, let me tell you we will make separate video on the topics vernacular press act then arms act and elbert bill so these three things are very important and we will try our best to make separate video on these three topics now friends we come to the foundation of the indian national congress so here you can see a picture of the first conference of the indian national congress well the indian national congress it was an all india organization and solid ground for its preparation for the construction of this organization was held between 1870 and 1880 it was basically formed by a retired english civil servant you have to know this aho ao hume who organized the first session of the indian national congress well the venue for the first session of indian national congress was gokuldas tejpal sanskrit college it is in bombay and the first session was held in the year 1885 so this is a very important thing you have to remember the first session of indian national congress was held in the year 1885 at bombay the venue was gokuldas tejpal sanskrit college the first session was organized by ao hum and then it was attended by 72 delegates it was presided over by vomesh chandra benerji so the theories behind formation of inc two very important theories uh, one theory was very important and the another theory was against the previous uh, the theory which we will discuss so theories behind formation of indian national congress like why it was formed what was its necessity so the british had observed the political situation in the country and was speculating that country was gearing for another rebellion like 1857 mutiny well 1857 mutiny is again a very important topic in history which we have covered in separate videos so if you want to learn about 1857 mutiny you can watch our other videos inc was found, founded by a retired civil servant and he was not indian ao hume he was not indian so british thus tried to provide a platform to the people where they could discuss their problems an englishman was involved in the formation of inc so it was speculated that british tried to provide a platform to the people where they could discuss their problems and it was said that inc was started by viceroy lord dufferin so viceroy lord dufferin who served the country between 1884 to 88 with the help of an ex civil services member ao hume as a safety valve against the popular discontent when they realized that the country was gearing for another rebellion on the like 1857 mutiny they created the indian national congress so this was the first theory given for the formation given behind the formation of indian national congress and the another theory it was against the theory of safety valve how what it said modern indian historians dispute the idea of safety valve inc represented the urge of the politically conscious indians to set up a national body to express the political and economic demands of the indian 
INC would have faced serious opposition if it was formed by an Indian. Like why uh, they are in support of the formation of INC by a, by an ex civil servant who is not Indian, as they are of a viewpoint that INC would have faced serious opposition if it was formed by an Indian. The early Congress leaders used Hume as lightning conductor, that is as a catalyst to bring together the nationalistic forces. So these are the th uh, two theories. The one is safety valve theory and the another one, uh, this theory is against the theory of safety wall. These theories, uh, these two theories have been given behind the formation of Indian National Congress. So friends, after 1885, as I said you earlier, that first session of Indian National Congress was held in 1885. So after 1885, the Congress met every year at different parts of the country, each time in December. Great presidents of the Congress in early phase were Dada Bhai Naroji, who has been president of INC thrice, then Badruddin Tayabji, Feroz Shah Mehta, P. Anand Charlu, Surendranath Banerjee, Ramesh Chandra Dutt, Anand Mohan Bose and Gopal Krishna Gokhale. Other prominent leaders included Mahadev Govind Ranade, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Sisir Kumar Ghosh, Motilal Ghosh, Madan Mohan Malviye, G. Subramanya Ayyad, C. Vijay Raghav Charya and Dinsha E. Vacha. So these were, uh, these were great precedents of the Congress in early phase and these were uh, other prominent leaders of Indian National Congress. Then you can friends see here we have a picture of Gopal Krishna Gokhale and here we have Bal Gangadhar Tilak whose nickname is Lukmane Tilak. So here you can see Kadambini Ganguly. Now who was she? In 1890, she was the first woman graduate from Calcutta University and she addressed the Congress session is 1890, in the year 1890. So what does it prove? It proves that women were taking active participation in national issues. Now what were the aims and objectives of the Congress? Why, uh, on what points was it working? So, main aims of the INC in the initial stage, well, the aims of INC changed with time. So, the main aims of the INC in the initial stage were to find a democratic nationalist movement, politically educate the people and establish headquarters for a movement to promote friendly relations among nationalist political workers from different parts of the country, to develop and propagate an anti-colonial nationalist ideology and develop a feeling of national unity among people and carefully promote and nurture Indian nationhood. So these were aims and objectives of the Congress. Now, we are going to discuss about era of moderates. This era was between 1885 to 1905. That is for 20 years. The Congress is known for two type of, uh, you can say ideologies or groups. These were moderates. And another one were extremists. They had separate viewpoints, separate ideas. They worked on, uh, the method of working was completely different. And in this video, we will discuss completely about moderates. And in other videos, we will learn about extremists. So, who are moderates? Moderates were Dada Bhai Naroji, Firoz Shah Mehta, D.E. Vacha, W.C. Bonerji, S.N. Banerji, and their ideology was liberalism and moderate politics. Their ideology was liberalism and moderate politics. And here you can see picture of Dada Bhai Naroji who was the president of INC thrice. Now friends, what was their approach? What was moderate approach? 
it was constitutional agitation within the boundary of law they always believed in following law they believed that british basically wanted to be just to the indians but were not aware of the real conditions so they believed on the fact that british wanted to be just with the indians according to them if public demands be presented to the government through resolutions petitions and meetings the authorities would definitely acknowledge their demands the moderate leaders believe that the political connection with britain were in india's interest and at that stage of history and that the time was not right for a direct challenge to the british rule so at uh, uh, some points or at some extent the ideology was in favor of the indians and indian citizen and then they tried to transform the colonial rule to be as close as national rule as possible so they basically wanted to transform the colonial rule to as close as the national rule what was their methodology now how did they worked so they had two pronged methodology first was creating a strong public opinion to arouse consciousness and national spirit and then educate and unite people on common political questions the second one was persuade the british government and british public opinion to introduce reforms in india on the lines laid out by the nationalists so this was their methodology they believed in prayer and petition they used uh, they thought that uh, praying and file filing a petition giving a petition would work and if not they will they would go for constitutional agitation so what was the contributions of moderate nationalists to the indian history first one was they were economic critique of british imperialism the uh, what they did they were the early nationalist who put forward the drain theory to explain british exploitation of india what is drain theory when something drains the economy of our country was declining was degrading on daily basis the money the resources from our country was going out of our country and they put forward the drain theory to explain to the colonial rule about the exploitation of india they created an all india public opinion that british rule in india was the major cause of india's poverty and economic backwardness then they demanded reduction in land revenue these uh, are very important points they demanded reduction in land revenue abolition of abolition of salt tax improvement in working conditions of plantation labor reduction in military expenditure and encouragement to modern industry through tariff protection and government aid so the, uh, they were basically economic critique of british imperialism and these were their demands now comes the constitutional reforms and propaganda in legislature they wanted uh, some reforms in the legislature now what was the things going on at that time at that time legislative council in india had no real official power till the year 1920 but work done in them by the nationalists helped the growth of the national movement between the year 1862 to 1892 that is for only between uh, for 33 years only 45 indians were nominated to the imperial legislative council the national demand for constitutional reform was centered on expansion of councils and reform of councils what they wanted they wanted a uh, greater participation of indians in councils and more powers to the councils especially greater control over finances so what happened indian members were very less in the councils and you cannot expect that if you are not 
at the administration if you are not a member of the administration we ex we can expect very less favor from the administration okay so this happened at the time the demands for constitutional reforms were meant to have been conceded in eighteen ninety two in the form of Indian Councils Act. In later videos, we will uh, read about Indian Councils Act. What happened in the year eighteen ninety two? Did the imperial rule? Did the colonial power? agreed to their demands or not so uh, we will discuss all these points in our in separate videos they did a lot of campaigning they campaigned for general administrative reforms they campaigned on the following grounds they wanted indianization of government service on the economic grounds on the political grounds and on on, on moral grounds how on the economic grounds British civil servants got very high emoluments, while inclusion of Indians would be more economical. On the political grounds, since salaries of British bureaucrats were remitted back home and pensions paid in England, and all or um, all the finances were being managed from Indian revenue, which resulted to economic drain of national resources and how on moral grounds Indian were being discriminated against by being kept away from positions of trust and responsibility. So at all higher posts only Britishers were employed. And then they wanted uh, judicial and executive functions to be separated they criticized aggressive foreign policy which resulted in annexation of burma attack on afghanistan and separation of tribes in the northwest all costing heavily for the indian treasury so what uh, the colonial power used to do they managed everything from the indian treasury and it was costing heavily on the indian treasury the next was call for increase in expenditure on welfare welfare how uh, they wanted increase in expenditure on health and sanitation education especially elementary and technical irrigation works and improvement of agriculture agricultural banks for cultivators and other such things so they wanted increase in expenditure of these welfare things and not on the things which colonial power was doing then they demanded for better treatment for indian labor abroad in other british colonies where they faced oppression and racial discrimination next was protection of civil rights what happened civil rights included the right to speech thought association and a free press through an uh, incessant campaign the nationalists were able to spread modern democratic ideas and soon the defense of civil rights became an integral part of the freedom struggle well you must know that great public outrage at the arrest of tilak and several other leaders and uh, journalist in the year 1897 and at the arrest and deportation of natu brothers without a trial these things worked against the colonial powers now friends who were natu brothers they were involved in uh, annexation of rand who was inspector at pune so uh, they a uh, great public outrage was faced by the colonial power against the arrest and deportation of the natu brothers and that too without the trial so we have learned so far we learned about the inc their approach their ideology and their demands now we are going to read about the attitude of the government how government responded to all these things the acts of moderates were the, was um, the government in favor of the inc or against let's see will the government was hostile it was not at all in favor of 
what INC was doing there they stiffened their attitude after 1887 and failure of government to persuade the congress to confine itself to social issues uh, the government could not persuade the congress to confine itself to social issues open condemnation of congress like uh, they started condemning openly by calling the congress leaders seditious brahmins and disloyal babus government adopted divide and rule policy as we all are aware about this policy divide and rule they encouraged reactionary elements like sir sayed ahmed khan and raja shiv prasad singh of banaras to organize united indian patriotic association to counter the congress propaganda and then they tried to divide the nationalist on the basis of religion and next was they pitted the moderates against the extremists through a policy of carrot and stick so this uh, carrot and stick policy uh, is a kind of weapon in the hands of uh, the colonial power the government uh, the basic idea behind this policy is providing carrot and stick at the same time like what they used to do they did some actions in uh, support in favor of the demands and at the same time they provided uh, something uh, the rule were made as such that those things went against the indian interest so this was their policy of carrot and stick if you want a detailed video on this policy of the britishers carrot and stick policy you can write in the comment section i will try my level best to make a separate video on the topic so here this topic ends this was uh, the video was based completely upon the inc but as i always say that history is a uh, continuity one topic is uh, linked to another so we will learn about extremists in other video there if you like the video if you learned anything from this video please give it a like comment share and subscribe keep learning